We'll do five, four, three, two, one, and go. Nice. So we got Mighty Morphin Power Rangers by Dan the Man Show, number one. We're going to be using a lot of Kimberly starting here in stage one. She uh, has the reach when she's in Power Ranger form, and her damage is totally fine too. So, um, since this is kind of just like a side scrolling beat em up, it's more about Dan Show um, remembering where all the spawns are and um, being able to take them out immediately just to kind of progress the screens as fast as he possibly can. Yep, pretty much. And uh, in plenty of cases like this, when they will spawn on both sides of him, he will uh, throw or whatever he needs to do to kind of line them up and uh, perform his uh, com full combo on them to get them all. You can combo everything. The game is really easy, but if you combo one guy at a time, then it just takes forever. So the more you can line them up and uh, kill them all at the same time, the faster this goes. Yeah, pretty much. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, not really too technical of a game. You just kind of punch, 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 step, punch, 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 step, and punch. It's and all, an occasional jump kick. It's all an intricate dance choreographed by Dan Showan, the man who holds the world's record in this game. Yeah, it's still shit. <laughs> That's because it's you. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, all the stages follow the same format. You kind of walk around as the normal teenager for a while, and then you run into the boss and you'll morph. And now we got super buff Kimberly. And you can see the, the bow here. It's just has a really, really long range, so I went for it. Yeah, yeah pretty much uh, putties have a like, arbitrary value of 8 life, and our full combo will deal 8, unless you do like 3 punches and a frame stutter, and then you can do another 3 punches. It pretty much just saves about like 36 frames worth over the whole run, and it's just overall just doing the cancel is not worth it. Like, only in Ranger form is the 4-hit combo actually worth it. What a dick. Uh, had a backup strat this. <laughs> so, putties will do different things based on where they get on the screen. Most of the time, I'm going to try to kill them before they hit their, like, certain area. Because they have to walk into, like, this guy here. If he takes another, like, half a step, he's going to... Uh, just throw out the basic like you know jab or his knife attack and it's gonna kick me back so it's pretty much just gotta get them before they do anything like here you can kill a putty if they're in the air in one hit so we just knock them before they actually hit the ground um dark green and purple putties are like the most annoying because actually yeah, you have to damage them more than just shooting an arrow through like these guys here I'll go into more on it, what actually happens when you don't organize a putty better when we get to stage 5. But uh, first boss is Bones here. He's kind of a dick. Like, you really got to have like a good spacing on him, like a max range combo, and then you can pretty much, if everything goes right, it's his second form is all RNG. That's pretty good, though. Yeah, it's pretty much as good as it's going to get. His second form, um, if you're too close, he'll jump away, and it'll just you'll knock him back, and you won't be able to hit him. Final form is just really easy. It's just, you just stutter your combo. You can infinitely buffer your final slash, which is about four damage. Uh, it just depends on how you just you just crouch and walk forward nonstop, and you'll buffer it through. You got this stitch. <laughs> Um, great. I need to focus. <laughs> Trini, at least from my personal perspective, is kind of one of the worst ones, aside from Billy, but uh, her ranger form is perfect for this uh, stage's boss, so um, it's worthwhile to use her. She just doesn't have a lot of range. She doesn't do a lot of damage. Yeah, stage 2 is probably one of the the worst like execution yeah. involved levels. There's a lot of grouping you have to do, and she again just doesn't have very good range, so it's it's really easy to let a putty slide and have to deal with it. And you can let the damage catch up to you too. So we're gonna line the shield putties up. Shield putties are pretty awful. You really gotta just dig into their shield. It takes about 20 damage to actually get through. 
Yeah, this has been a rough stage so far. Yeah, it's pretty rough. So this is a setup to get these uh, dark green putties to line up. It's like one of the worst setups in the game. Uh, if you screw it up, you won't be able to line these guys up. But pretty much the dark green putties, um, if you're on equal ground with them, like if you're on a lower pixel or higher pixel, they'll jump away in between your stutter, and you got to be like really quick on it. So if you delay it anymore, like he jumped there, that's just it happens. But so you want to always line your putties up so there's equal space between you and them and an even ground. And they're like here, you have to delay killing the gray putty, otherwise this guy's gonna jump like a dick. But yeah. Trini's pretty awful, but she is the fastest for the stage just because uh, it's not going to happen, but there is like a god pattern on the boss, and overall, like, she saves about two and a half minutes on the actual boss. Minutes? Yeah, dang. Because Kimberly can, like, I'll, I'll try to mention it. it's just too hard to explain. You're the commentator. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've never played as Kimberly on this stage, so I don't know, man. I only do the world class strats, you yeah. know? Fair enough, fair enough. Alright, so pretty much the whole game is just like managing enemies on the screen and like, you know, you gotta power slash line them up. There's a trick here, it's pretty hard because this game has a mechanic where you have to hold up in order to grab onto the ledge and then you have to tap up to flip up. Yeah. Ooh. So you can actually get a quick climb, but you have to be like pixel perfect on your first lineup and it's just kind of a pain in the ass because the power slash you do on a few putties before actually lines it up, but if you're off by a few pixels, it's just completely shot. And it's a big time saver too, because should you mess up the cycle somewhere, you gotta end up waiting for all the hazards and that just is a big waste of time. Yeah, exactly. So there are lag reduction strats here, like when you throw a putty, uh, when the debris is falling, it uh, decreases the lag. That actually happens. Oh, it's nothing really special. Like it's your basic like, side scroll beat 'em up, but it is pretty fun, and it's got a nostalgia factor that everyone loves. It's Power Rangers, man. No, I mean it doesn't look like he's doing much, but like and you can you can sit down and beat this game casually, no problem. But you know it'll take you twice the amount of time or so that Dan Show's gonna take. So. I did a line up there on the first jump, and I was able to get underneath this missile that falls. Uh, it's pretty much just another like pixel perfect jump that you have to do to line yourself up so you don't get hit by the spinning saw blades. There's just a few tricks that like pretty much it's all position based. Like there's a task right here. If you do like second frame jump, you can kill all these guys, and if you get it, you'll land right on the edge. Otherwise, you'll fall to the bottom and you can't combo this guy. And then we have the worst section in the game, and obviously, Marathon, I'm gonna fall. But if you fall here, you gotta wait like three cycles for this to actually reline up. Yeah, it's really bad, so. And there's no way to skip it, unfortunately. So we're coming up on the boss here. Call him the gardener. It's pretty much just like a gnome with the rake, so it's <laughs> fitting. Uh, pretty much what's gonna happen is he's gonna there's gonna be like a bunch of platforms and when you combo him he's gonna teleport around. And it's just a complete RNG fest of like where he goes. We wanna see him in the top left, middle left, or the top right platform. And what we can do is we can combo off off another platform and hit him onto another one and keep keep chaining it essentially. So like this, and Trini's the only ranger that can have a uh, four hit combo on the boss, so she effectively deals about 11 damage every combo you do like this. So you can hit him um, three times and it'll kill him with the next bomb, so it's just a pretty much an RNG fest. Yeah, it's just seconds being thrown away here because of how he's teleporting and not going anywhere. So since we didn't actually get the quick kill, we may or may not kill him here based on the damage, but normally you would just go for a slash on him it if got he gets him, a dude. high platform. Yeah! I mean, it was super well executed by Dan. It's just he didn't get very good spawns there for most of the fight. But that was actually really good. Yeah, if you, if you get three platforms in a row, like the time save is just absurd. So That's like one of the he most heavy RNG parts of the game. It's just his teleports. Alright, we're in the sewers now. We're back to Kimberly. Um, the mechanics 
don't require anything special. So she's she's gonna be the go-to for um, just about everything that doesn't have some weird feature like the last stage. Yeah, pretty much Kimberly's used in just because she has the fastest walk speed. She may not be like overall like the best for certain stages, but definitely for like one, three, and five, we're gonna use her. Some people will use Jason for some of the other runners for stage three, just because he has a attack speed bonus. But overall, I think it's just not that beneficial. Being a gymnast, you know, she's lighting on her feet. Yeah, buddy. The whole game is pretty much managing putties. Unfortunately, there's a glitch coming up I can't do because it's it's just like set up for failure and it soft locks the game. It's called the Eye Guy glitch, but overall, if you were to ever land it, you'd pretty much uh, cause the boss to glitch out a sprite and you save like 15 seconds on his animation. So when you do your power kick there, which is a basic four hit combo, um, you cause, you get like about a second and a half of invincibility while your animation is still going, which is why it's used in certain spots when like the drills drop. Because sometimes when you're lining up putties, it's just you're gonna get hit by it if you don't do it quick enough. So you can just always not stutter and do the uh, four hit combo to actually keep your invincibility and not take the hit. Life is irrelevant in this game, though, unless you <laughs> jump out of a pit. Like, your life bar is stacks based on how many med kits you pick up, so... It's... I don't know. You shouldn't take too much damage. The only place that's actually relevant to die would be in the final boss, because he's just... an RNG fest and an asshole. Maybe stage two if you're really, really bad. Yeah, like, but, you know, if you have, like, you know, 32 minute time, like, Vic, or whatever. Hey, you're, you're being really nice. It's yeah. 34 minutes. It's 34, okay, whatever. It's good. I command prestigious sixth place in this game. <laughs> out of six. Yeah. Actually, maybe out of seven. I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah. You're there, you're there. Yeah. It's definitely, uh, yeah, you want a good time? Just, you know, blind race this game with someone, you'll probably beat half of the people. Or you like Vic and Delm. <laughs> So Definitely down. So we're just gonna manage some putties here. We just want to knock him closer. He's gonna do this wall jump that I could never do once. <sighs> I'm gonna try to. No, I'm definitely not going to. When you knock a putty down, they actually fall faster, and this tr the trigger for the water to go down is when both putties hit the ground. So it saves a little bit of time. It's not really too big of a deal, but yeah, this is the gimmick for this part of the stage now. Is the rising and um, lowering, lowering of the water, which can mess with you, because you can't attack either when you're in the swim animation. No. So then you gotta deal with all that. Yeah, it's pretty much like the auto-scroller type level. Like, you gotta wait to get through the cycle. It doesn't matter how fast you do certain parts or how slow, you're gonna come out at the end and the same. We're just gonna take some damage boosts just to get in a position to climb properly. I'm gonna go for a one in a hundred chance that this is gonna work, but you don't actually lose time if you go for this because of the gas still being on screen. And you actually will save like half a second if you were to jump through it with the damage boost. It's just like the, the hardest trick to do. So this is the part Bix really talking about. It's pretty much just you swim and you just nothing you can do. You can take all the damage you want. The water's gonna just wait. Like, you get here too late to actually climb up. I thought I was just bad. Well, you are. Right, yeah. but everybody is bad now. Alright, so we're gonna try to skip falling in the water here with an early jump. You can get up here. And we're just gonna pretty much do what we've been doing all game. It's faster to throw these guys off screen. And we're gonna go for, I don't know, a little trick found by a uh, speedrunner named Moon is if we get a certain jump through this saw, we should be able to get to this extra health. And like, it's actually, I don't know, it's fun to do, but it, you don't need life in this game. You're able to get up to this platform here. And unfortunately, the jump from like there to there is just not worth it. And you're stuck in this spot. You can't wall jump there to there, left to right or whatever, you're just stuck. And then you gotta wait here. It's a pretty fun game, guys. 
Alright, so we're coming up to Eye Guy. This is pretty much just a bunch of eyes. Uh, we wanted to see him shoot eyes at us. If he jumps or shoots lasers low... Okay, sweet. Yeah, exactly like that. Uh, then it's not good. Okay, yeah, 100% <laughs> like that. Jump away. If you stand too close to him, he tries to readjust and he jumps away. Anything that stops us from non stop comboing, like low shots or jumps, are just not good. Of course, that's what we're gonna get. So, phase one's pretty simple. Phase two is, I don't know, can be trolley. It's all based on his position. Or, you know, like godlike, whatever. That's pretty much as good as it gets. If he comes low, you can full combo him and. Oh, I missed the second hit. But pretty much uh, he has an 11 life in his final form, so you bomb him for 8 damage and you just go for a full combo on him, and then one jab and he's done. It's pretty rare to actually see it happen, but all RNG on his movement. Sometimes he can stay high up in the sky for... Oh yeah, yeah. we're doing it. So this is the only level that we use Zack in, just like Trini for stage 2. Zack has a, uh, a broken low kick. It actually deals more damage than any other ranger. And you can chain the green putties, like you can spam the button, so it doesn't matter at all. Uh, it's actually way faster to use him. It's, yeah, so he deals like, I don't know, normally takes five low kicks, but for Zack it's four for some reason, we don't know, so we're just... This laser's gonna troll us here and knock everyone away, so some more fun elements. Uh, lasers, chandeliers, like the chandeliers aren't too bad, we actually use them to hit some putties if they will. And we'll just use like jump kicks and other tools to kind of line up putties, knock them out. Zack's pretty OP in lining characters up for the stage, the only thing you don't really use is his throw. His throw is just like high and wide and pretty like lanky. Oh, it's off by a few pixels. So pretty much when you come close to a green putty, what he's going to do is he has two options. He's going to either jump away or he's going to stab at you. Um, if you walk away from him, it triggers him to jump towards you. But when you walk closer to him, he's like, oh, I'm just going to stab you in the face. So you, you pretty much just screw with his AI to actually stay in place for the ones that jump like far off screen. This trick here, if you get it, this gray putty can knife you pretty hard. So what's going to happen on the screen is enemies are going to come from both sides, but I'm too far to the left, so there's a good chance that one of the green putties is actually going to try to jump kick me, and if he does, it's, yeah, he's going to jump back and screw the pattern. That's pretty much it. Not bad. You want to take over for this part? <laughs> I know, I know you can do this part, man, it's okay. Yeah. So this is the auto-scroller level, and... You literally cannot die. You stack your life, and you literally just have to stand put. You can get hit by every single object here, and nothing happens. Like, your life bar slowly diminishes, but... Yeah. So, I, I think Vic's capable of, you know, clutching this out for me. And yeah, this is pretty much stage four. It's kind of slow. Uh, it is pretty rough. It requires specific space jumps to actually get through without getting knocked down. If you get knocked down, you just lose a bit of time, but you know, we're doing marathon, so it's good fun. See, dude, this guy, he knows how to jump over stuff. All right, now I see. All right, so the climb section. The climbing is so awkward in this game. It actually takes some getting used to. It's weird. a low jump here so that's pretty much as good as it gets like nice. it's you got to jump at specific spaces so you don't get hit by any of the uh the guys that shoot because if you shoot you fall down to the next level and it's pretty awful all right i'm gonna try something I don't normally... oh. <laughs> so the putty lingers on the right side of the screen there for about half a second and what it, it knocks another guy off the screen. And if he doesn't actually like explode before you jump, you're kind of screwed. So we're just gonna you know, go like this. 
The guy doesn't spawn if you throw him into the uh, pit. But, you know, we're gonna try some fun stuff. Right here is where we also abuse the invincibility that normally would uh, fall down and hit you, but since you're doing your power slash attack. Oh, we missed it. So you can knock the guys off the ledge there, and it's just faster to hit both of them, but one comes in at a different time. Uh, one of the only times we use a bomb in a stage is right here, because this floating Thing can uh, fall right below you on the screen and you actually cannot get to it. So it's kind of just a big time waste. Right, so we're going to come to like the hardest boss in the game, <laughs> like single-handedly. He's Definitely. just got a bunch of variety attacks. He's got like four or five attacks. Uh, if he does fireball, you're like set, so... Uh, yeah, if you hit him on the first like half second that he appears before he sticks his finger out, you can continuously loop him, and it's the hardest fight I've ever had to do in my life. And that's the fight. I know. Even I can do this one. Yeah, it's it's pretty straightforward. Like it, it's not difficult at all. The only downside is if he does like his dragon or he throws knives at the start, you gotta adjust accordingly to. Alright, so stage five by far has the most execution in the game. It's pretty much all just lining up yeah. putties that will jump away, and you got to be on specific. Yeah, it, it just sucks. It's a long stage too, I think. It's so. the the longest yeah. in the game. So there's a lot of time to be, you know, won or lost based on how well you can handle the putties. There's a lot of them. The three punch combos are very crucial here, uh, except on this one because you can't actually hit this guy. So we're just gonna we'll kick him a bunch. So the green putt is, this is where like being able to manage and do a stutter combo will really like come into play. It's because you gotta be on the even ground with them. No, I was too far forward. I'll just fucking take him out. See, if you're on even ground with them, they'll kind of stay and try to fight you, which is essentially what you're hoping for. This is the first time that we'll see our sword putties. Uh, they're kind of dicks. If one hits you, you're going to get knocked down. They'll chain stun you like three times in a row. It's just how we line the positions up. It kind of works in your favor or against you. It's the slope tills that really cause this stage to be a nuisance. Just because, like here, we have to make sure we're right on the edge. Otherwise, they'll jump away. And if you walk too far forward, when you go to do a grab and you're like a punch in your throat, like close to someone, you just like throw them away, and it's. Oh. So that's the first like really execution-based part of the stage. Uh, the next part's not too difficult. It's pretty much you just power slash and go. But there are a few strats we're gonna try to do. We're gonna try to skip some, well, some stairs. Have some fun with it. Uh, there's going to be a, a laser strat coming up. Uh, we're going to try to abuse the laser mechanic to hit us to kill the putties that are on the screen by throwing them into it. If you perfectly hit a putty like on top of them, you'll backflip off of them. And what we do there is just to actually get into a position to kill the, these arrows that fall, because they technically count as an enemy, so you can only have two to three enemies in specific spots on screen. We're gonna try to damage this there. So it's pretty much just like this strat here is for the laser setup, because so you want to be as close to these guys as you can. And we're gonna get them to kill these red putties that are an issue. You can either do it too soon, so we're gonna... Ah, we missed the one guy. We were a little too early, but it normally kills both. So we're gonna bring that laser with us, hopefully. And if not, then we have to back up shred this. If you do get the laser set up, then... Ah. This first guy is pretty much only able to get over him if you, uh do the proper laser setup, you can drag a third laser and it delays the screen. So 
So this next transition is probably the worst screen in the game for enemies wise. Um, they come in at random times and since there's a bunch of enemies on the screen, this game has a weird mechanic where it changes the damage value of the arrow based on how much, how many enemies it hits. So you can normally kill like two putties with one arrow, but if you go through two putties and through one of these computer screens, it changes the damage value and it actually takes like four arrows to kill a single putty. I'm just going to damage boost here, cancel our animation. So there's no real strat for that room, you just kind of wing it. It's definitely what I do. <laughs> um, you can normally throw uh, some guys like, like right there, it just doesn't work. You normally try to throw putties to the right unless you have like horrible execution like that. Um, pretty much the screen's always going to scroll to the right. You want to kill your enemies and just keep running. It's always faster to head to the right. Now we got the big old laser. Yeah, pretty much this is going to be this big ass laser that's going to dome us in the face. And we're just going to keep damage boosting through it. And then eventually its hitbox disappears. There's no active frames on it. Ah, lasers are dicks. Alright, so if I take one hit from the boss, I actually will die. <laughs> nah, I'll try not to get hit. I mean... Alright, so the strap for this boss is... You normally hit him and then he'll teleport to the other side of the screen. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to stop him from getting to the side of the screen so he can't teleport away. What we don't want to see is that bomb pattern. He lingers in the sky like too much. We want him to kind of attack us. Uh, you can cancel everything he does when you hit him. So The only thing we don't want to see when we're in the corner is pretty much that. If he does like uh, that the dash little poke thing he does is actually like a serious amount of damage. It takes about like a quarter of your life bar and you have to hit him like before it even gets to you. So in this instance, like taking a hit from him would get us killed. It's a super easy fight though when he's in the corner. Nice fight, dude. All right, so now we're coming to the fun. Uh, pretty much, oh yeah. You do five stages, and then, you know, you do your Megazord fights. So these ones are pretty trolly. Uh, the AI hasn't been fully, like, worked out on them. Uh, we're just going to dash dash at them and fuck them up, more or less. Yeah, there's just a hell of a lot of inconsistency. And sometimes you get the god fight, like how this is going right now, and sometimes you can't land a hit forever, and sometimes they just chain and destroy you, and it's just a big troll. The downside with the dash slat is he's in the corner, so he's going to walk out just a little bit before he dies. If you kill him mid-screen, he just dies instantly, because you got to set up this power slash. And... Yeah. So pretty much that was pretty good That's as pretty it goes. Good, yeah. So now we're coming to like the run killer of all things is uh, Cyclopsis. It's technically like Goldar's Megazord that he gets. Um, there's a like continuous loop on him, but if you can't get him into the corner and start the loop, Getcha. Oh man, dude. It's, yeah, it's gonna be like this. He's way more trolly, too. Like, the first one's kind of like a practice round with your Megazord, and this one's just super serious. He also has two life bars, basically. So. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty awful. What you want to do is do these heavy slashes in the air. It deals the most damage. Yeah. It's just really hard to get it consistent. Now we're getting there. Oh. All right, so that's the first form. Second form deals more damage. Uh, we're coming up on time soon, so I'll let you know when. And uh, yeah, so what we're gonna try to do is keep him in the corner. If he dashes out, it's fine. And we're just gonna, oh, okay, he dashed out. So what you normally do is you would just jab him and keep looping him with this power slash. Yeah. But since he's full screen, we're gonna stay in his fireball range and just jump over. And time. So. Oh. That's 
pretty awful. That's okay. okay. It's pretty bad. That's but okay. It is what That's it okay. is. Uh, the bosses are really trolly in this game, and it just requires a bunch of execution, so... Yeah. It is what it is. That's totally fine. It's totally fine. We'll let the credits roll out, and... be. I have no idea what's coming up next. I, <laughs> I didn't come prepared for this. I think it's Doom, is it? Yeah. We have Doom 64. Yeah. I don't know the category. Watch me die. Yes, it's going to actually be pretty sweet. I was watching the practice of this. It's going to be hype. Such Zack Sprite is something, yeah, something it, to behold it, it here. Is something, yeah. It is something. It's, it's, uh, it's a Sprite. Yeah, like... It's an interesting one of all the things there is. Unfortunately, we don't get to use Billy at all. Uh, he has his own separate category. Billy percent. You, you just think of like if you took all the Rangers and removed everything they had good about them, and you just made that fifth character as Billy. He's he lose three minutes or two minutes on walk speed, stubby limbs, low damage. It's pretty shit. And yeah, that was Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and we're gonna watch him jam out. Good round, dude. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. It's yeah. pretty good. Pretty, pretty, it's bad. pretty good. Pretty good.